Hi, this is Smita Kumar and you're watching MediCircle. In our initiative to tap what is actually going on in the healthcare sector, we are talking to the top CEOs of the healthcare industry. In this series, today we are speaking to Dr. Alok Malik and uh, he is the group's uh, CEO of uh, Omni Chain of Hospitals. He has got a lot of uh, things. Apart from that, he's a healer, an advisor, he's a mentor, he's an IT evangelist, a spiritual trainer, a light worker, and a lifelong learner. He's the group CEO of an expanding chain of mid tertiary care hospitals in the southern East India with nearly 1,000 operating beds. He has also come on board with mandate of stabilizing existing operations and facilitating growth in neighboring geographies. So hello, Dr. Alok. Welcome to MediCircle. Good evening, Smita. So uh, to begin with, I would be having some quick questions and uh, let's find it out from you. Yeah, so, sure. Let's start. So the first one is uh, the three major challenges of the healthcare industry are like affordability, availability, and accessibility. What, according to you, is the solution to eradicate these issues? Yeah, affordability is a big challenge. Healthcare, uh, healthcare uh, uh, inflation in the private sector has been close to 15, 20% per year over the last decade. And uh, just a simple comparison, uh, Hero Wonder Bow Bike, probably 15 years ago, used to buy it a base model for 30, 40,000 rupees. When at that time you were doing a hernia surgery for 25,000 rupees. Today the bike might have become 60,000. Hernia surgery has become 1.5 lakhs, right? So it's just everything going through the roof. It's, it's, it's really weird. Uh, we used to always feel that India is a lowest cost destination of healthcare. It's exploded everywhere also. But in India, being uh, everybody being so price sensitive, it doesn't work. When every every other industry has probably gone up in ten years, hundred percent, you can't shouldn't have gone up four hundred percent. So that 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 is that is troublesome. That is really troublesome. I hope accessibility we... is uh, is of course a new buzzword, <laughs> and uh, I truly believe that the hospital which uh, owns the patient's mobile will own the patient's heart ultimately yes. and i refer to a beautiful book called the the patient will now call you um today we consume all products and services on a mobile you want to buy a shirt you buy it on mobile you want to get a plumber you do it on your mobile but you want to buy healthcare, you got to go stand in a queue even to register yourself i mean that's ridiculous that has to change and change is happening. Whoever changes fast will win the race, definitely. Very <laughs> so I think from an accessibility purpose, definitely prospective. Uh, patients would be looking for something like self-registrations and even uh, online consultations, which would be all driven through the mobile. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely, that's the future. And it's very rapidly coming up in India. Yes. So we in our group are also very focused on that. Major initiatives coming that way. Okay. To go totally paperless, to to kind of expose every possible service that is exposable on the mobile to the patient. So he doesn't have to keep running to the hospital just to show a silly x-ray, right? Mm -hmm. To the doctor. Every you can he can consult on the mobile, he can uh, mobile consultation itself can cut down your OPD rush by 30%. Eight. Minimum. Yeah. Uh, so Dr. Ashok Malik, how has your journey in the healthcare? Me. Yeah, I, I just like to correct you. It's Alok. Um, healthcare, yeah, I have I've loved it. I mean, I was, by the way, I was five years full time in IT also. So, but then I came back to healthcare. The ability to touch patients' life is, is, is massive in healthcare, right? As, as a consultant, as a, as a doctor, as a nurse, as a CEO, you touch people's life and you touch hundreds and thousands of lives. And that makes a big difference. You know, there have been occasions when I was heading units. And of course, now uh, I am heading a group where patients have come and, 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 uh, and told me uh, that you run a great hospital at the time of discharge. Uh, can I have, can, can you come and have dinner with us? You know, and that's one of the best compliments I, I, I have received till now, right? Mm -hmm. Patients, you know, Probably asking me to come and have dinner, I didn't probably ask his own consultant. 
so so you you can touch lives you can really touch lives when they want to be touched right it's a unique profession where you are in a position to to bring succor to patients when they need it of course money is made money money transfers hand and uh, one big thing that people don't realize is the patient wants to be treated like a human being right not like a commodity and the more you smile the more you are upcoming the more you are treating him with compassion compassion healthcare the westerners are realizing it but india is as usual slow of the race it's it's a big it's a big topic of education overseas you you google for compassion in healthcare compassionate healthcare there are there are multi million dollar organizations which train healthcare workers on how to be compassionate right and big studies have been done overseas and in india two months of following discharge the patient doesn't remember the fancy hospital the clean rooms the clean beds the only thing he remembers was how nicely he was treated by everybody in the hospital definitely right how kind were the nurses how kind were the housekeeping people how approachable was the doctor is the quality of patient touch points as the most important thing sure. so all those things are now gaining prominence and i'm sure all hospitals will start working then you yes. see more smiling faces when you go to a private hospital now earlier everybody was grouchy and you know yes the take it or leave it attitude <laughs> <laughs> i think things are changing um we have seen a lot of changes in the way like the healthcare industry works or uh, due to covid so especially like covid mm-hmm. has changed the healthcare to a lot so what according to you will be the future of healthcare future is see healthcare covid was a blip and it was a positive blip for some it was a negative blip for some those who couldn't control their costs those who couldn't uh, uh who couldn't uh, um, kind of uh, manage their safety of their staff they actually lost their doctors lost their staff lost their patients right and many hospitals got very terribly hit many hospitals aggressively prepared aggressively uh, i don't remember we th- those are days when uh, uh, early days april when uh, pp kits were not available in india okay. you know you had to pay huge amount of money for imported pp kits we were rushing ambulances to nagpur you know nagpur is the big place where all these big flights were coming in from china and all and uh, and we were actually bidding for pp kits right at the airport and filling them in the ambulances and getting back to the hospital we spent lakhs and lakhs of rupees to buy pp kits at that time to make our doctors our staff feel safe okay. yes everything is available right and but now the same kit is so is available is manufactured in india is very cheap dime a dozen you know manufacturers good quality so um doctors have also the healthcare givers have also understood the risk and understood that uh, these risks can be contained by doing abc so they have come back to the hospitals patients have also started coming back to the hospitals and uh, there is a rebound now which is going to start most probably from from january not yet started because you can't you can't cancel healthcare right you can delay it okay. there are lots of procedures lots of surgeries lots of cardiac procedures which w- had to be done but patients are not doing it because they were scared of covid now they will start there is a rebound going to come in okay. but then at the same time patients will have reduced payment capacity right most of healthcare in india is out of pocket patients because of covid they've lost their jobs or they they reduced earning or they 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 are still in the job but they're underemployed right so they have a much reduced out of pocket payment capacity right we are looking at ways and means to address that to create a kind of buy now pay later scenario for patients see you don't have to pay 1 lakh up front right yeah you pay 10000 and pay rest in emis so those kind of things are coming up because there are lots of sickness which is pending which is pending to be treated in the community healthcare is going to stay 
lots of it is uh, telemedicine is getting well established the laws have come in rapidly so telemedicine is going to stay uh, i think by now pay later is going to stay definitely i think uh, fixed prices are going to stay this is one thing that healthcare will have to learn uh, patients do ask us ki when i go to buy a car and for a particular trim level i need to pay this much amount of money i know how much i got to pay but yeah. when i come to buy healthcare Same. when the results are replicable when your costs are replicable why am i always worrying i don't know bill kitna hoga sure except for a few things like you know angiography angioplasty you know uh joint replacement surgeries few things you know there are fixed prices there are packages everything is the hospital will give a estimate x and ultimately the final bill will be y the biggest worry of the patient is what will be my bill yes you get it so um so we are all working i'm sure other hospitals also working we have about 150 fixed price packages across across our, all our hospitals okay we work on fixed prices now okay right other kind of things are coming in you get a you get me an estimate from another hospital i'll give you 20% of that everything healthcare is just you know so the patient will be king now no hospital to realize the grand old days of you know, you charge anything and it it will it will work that's going to end that's going to end so hospitals have also started looking at the cost no hospital it will be a rare hospital which has a cost accountant today right so there is no cost benchmarking across a hospital or a group i mean you any any one of the mba programs in healthcare doesn't even teach you what are the cost benchmarks but still it has been implemented okay because nobody worried about cost yes. nobody worried about cost yes okay so but then those those have become integral to operations to start worrying about cost to start trying to reduce cost the big four the biggest healthcare practice today is around cost whether it's ey or it's mckinsey or anybody in india is on reducing cost right cost has become a big lever now okay India's total healthcare spending is at 3.6 percent of the GDP, which is very less compared to other developed countries. Mm-hmm. US spends 18 percent. I mean, Japan spends around 10 percent. Even Bangladesh spends more than us. So, do you think it's a high time India needs a generous amount of spending in the healthcare sector? Yeah, those are uh, actually <laughs> those are those are numbers which are always beaten around. Uh, see, India has a huge population. So if you start looking at per capita, the numbers are always going to be low, right? So, uh, but uh, what happens is, how is the spend getting spent, right? Look at the quality of our. It's more important to fix the quality issue of public health care. Definitely. You fix the quality issue, fix the quality of life issue for the doctor there. Why doesn't the doctor want to stay there and work there? Mm-hmm. You really need to look at that. make it worth his while to stay there and work there make it worth his while for the nurse to stay there and work there and then put money on that because the more money you put the government also realizes the more money you put it all goes down the drain so now we have uh, stuff like uh, at least my friends in 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 government uh, healthcare they say ki they have uh, yeah, stuff like biometric attendance but then biometric attendance systems you just come at 8 in the morning you swipe and then go out and do your private practice and come back at 4 in the evening and swipe i mean those systems can be game right yes. so one seriously has to i have seen some beautiful public hospitals by the way where hospitals are clean they're busy of course they are always be busy definitely, definitely. i was uh, i was i was uh, i was in the military of course and uh, when i was a surgeon in the nasik military hospital the nasik district hospital had a waiting list of surgery for one year clean hospital four general surgeons two neurosurgeons three orthopedic surgeons you know and all of them busy all of them operating every day okay so if uh, one place can do it every place can do it Surely. so first fix that issue fix the why the doctors are unwilling to they 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 come and join an okri but then they they don't work there Sure. Are they unwilling to work there? Fix that issue, and then th- there are a lot of management issues. Of course, there is a funding issue. There are the lots of management issues. 
And once that is solved, then put the fund. Otherwise, that will money down the drain. That will be money down the drain. So I think government is doing the right thing to put money into into a fund, into an insurance fund. See, if I can't, if I don't have the wherewithal or the management bandwidth to run all these public sector hospitals well, let me at least start an insurance fund so that they can be treated in the private sector hospitals. Definitely. I think that's a step in the right direction. Yes. And uh, but then they, what they can do is they can they can set up every state should set up some kind of a center of excellence management excellence for their district hospitals and so that other districts can learn from this yeah and so, then things will gradually change okay as you said about this nasik hospital nasik public hospital it was wonderful we used to i mean sometimes uh, we didn't have a neurosurgeon we used to send the patients there we always had a good experience there okay yeah so i think if other places also follow the same protocol definitely we can have better public health services which we still don't imagine of because as those we still have great uh, primary health centers we have still have great uh, district hospitals and th- those stories should be publicized and other hospitals need to come and learn from there other managers need to come and learn from there right is they they are, they are just poorly managed that nothing is most of the government healthcare facilities are poorly managed definitely so if the management and everything is proper even the experience- then you put money so- yeah, absolutely then you put money yes rightly said very rightly said so thank you so much dr malik for i mean sharing your insightful views with us i think we all know that uh, this empathy and uh, etiquette matters it matters how you treat the patient and the patient does not remembers these clean beds and high end machines rather he remembers the approach of the i mean healthcare staff towards him or her so i think we all need to work upon that important factor that yes very true treating the patients as human beings and not as commodities as very very rightly said by you. so i once again thank you so much thanks to you to thank you smita sharing uh, your views with us and letting people know that there are public hospitals who are doing great but yes they, many don't know that as you said i told me i have visited nasik so many times but i didn't knew that there exists a yeah is it that hospital it is a wonderful hospital and I, i hope it is still the same i am talking of 10 years ago sure. it is a wonderful hospital So if we have these rural road models and we can have these projects in each city we won't be going for any private hospital ever because in only all yeah. developed countries even in other parts of the world it is more of the private public health which people is people have a choice people right. have a choice you know even in a place like sing a place like jakarta uh, indonesia you have public hospitals which are crowded but they're clean they're well managed so the poor go there and the affording people they come to the private hospital i was the country ceo of mayapada hospital there in indonesia and so the rich people used to come to us we had uh, fabulous hospitals seven star hospitals uh-huh. right and of course the poor people used to go to the local public hospital which was clean well managed but crowded so yes. it's fine i mean you 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 you're, you're getting it free you stand in a queue but at least you don't have to look at filth and and absolutely dirty unmanaged hospitals where you know as we say some of our public hospitals are so filthy sure. how much does it take to get a place cleaned up right it's just poor shoddy management nothing is definitely and the best part which you said that it is not only for the patients but also for the doctors and the people who are actually healthcare exactly prof- they are unwilling to come and work there yes because it's and the, the government is paying them salaries yes. right Yes, definitely. All that four percent of the budget that you are saying, or three point six percent, lots of it is going in salaries. Yes, it is. So once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Malik. Thanks for thank joining. Thank you, ma'am.